Good afternoon. Welcome. As we begin this liturgy together, we ask that you please turn off all electronic devices. We thank our parishioners and visitors to St. Raphael's for wearing their masks. Please do not gather anywhere before or after Mass and maintain a safe distance. St. Raphael is now a member of Amazon Smile. Please see the bulletin for details. To request a 2020 donation letter for income tax filing, please see the bulletin for details. Missiles will be available after Mass for a free will offering. Please see Diane or Nancy in the gathering area of the church or call the rectory to arrange for pickup. The rectory remains closed but accepting phone calls Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. The north door may be used to exit only. Please exit the church immediately after Mass so that the church can be sanitized and prepared for the next Mass. Thank you. The presider of this Mass is Father Ben, assisted by Deacon Dennis. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to peace. People of goodwill, we, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God. Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy, have 
have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now, Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me. Because of your goodness, O Lord, teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, and teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, O Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them. Those weeping as not weeping. Those rejoicing as not rejoicing. Those buying as not owning. Those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, come after me and I will make you fishes of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked al along a little further he, and saw James, the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They too were in a boat mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat along with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. When my eldest brother just got married, he did not know what it was like living with a woman. And one day, he came back from his uh, hospital saying to his wife, my sister-in-law, that how come your food is not as good as my mother? That was the beginning of his disaster. <laughs> we all want to go back to the place or the person or the ambience we miss. And usually they are memories around the mother and memories around the home village. Besides my childhood memories, I have another memories about my formulation to become, that was to become a Jesuit priest. The two years intensely involved in a cloistered life in a mountain area. There was a time I was able to set my, my foundation as a Jesuit. And the time was somewhat challenging, but whenever I am tired, whenever I miss, something is deeply missing. My memories are always going back to my novitiate time. To the disciples of Jesus, 
they had the same experiences. From today's gospel, it looks like the Peter, Andrew, James, and John. They are the disciples of John the Baptist. In a sense, Jesus might have also joined the camp of John the Baptist Baptist for a brief time period. When the John the Baptist was decapitated, they all lost the directions. And these traumatized memories, they wanted to go back to their home. That was Galilee. Then what is Galilee? Galilee, apparently back in Jesus' time, was somewhat premature in terms of for the disciples who were constantly involved in conflicts between the Jews and the Galileans. Apparently, Galileans were relatively second, second, secondary citizens in comparison with the Jews from Jerusalem area. Jews lost their own temple and their own home village. The next place to restore themselves they chose was the Galilean area. So all the Jews in the southern kingdom, they moved to Galilee. It was like a war refugees. I remember the, the place I grew up. That place was filled with all the refugees from North Korea of the Korean War, and my family was one of them. And thinking back, now I understand the original people or the indigenous people who were living in that area, they must have felt frightened with this inundation of the refugees. We were living in an environment where there was no home ambience anymore, no ancestral cemeteries, no relatives in the neighboring house. My parents raised in that environment. My parents raised us in that environment. In a sense, Galileans felt the same experiences from the inundation of the Jews from Jerusalem area. Due to the failure in Roman revolting against the Rome. But far before that, Jesus also was from Nazareth, a part of Galilee, and disciples were all from Galilee area. Originally, this Galilee was believed that the dwelling place for the four tribes, Asia from northern west, and Naphtali from probably northern east, and Asia, j e v e l i n from southern west, and Ishakar from northern, southern west. These four tribes, including other, other four tribes, so total eight tribes were all dismantled due to the Assyrian invasion that was about 700 years ago before Jesus and his followers were born. Therefore, the Galilee was believed as the place they lost their own soul. And they were, the place was invaded by pagans and Gentiles. So people from Galilee were believed as less, less privileged. And Jews from Jerusalem area, they somehow despised them. But yet, 
after the failure in revolting against Rome, that was around 40 years after Jesus' crucifixion, they were, the place was inundated with Jews. So that was around the time the Markan community was trying to establish its own identity from, that is different from the Judaic community by establishing Christian identity in the name of the followers of Jesus. This Galilee is located especially in a lake, the Lake of Galilee, 700 feet down from the sea level. The Galilee symbolizes the place we are all reborn, the womb of Christian followers, the followers of Jesus and their dedication to Jesus. The Galilee was the place the disciples were trained by Jesus. And all the early followers of Jesus and the followers of the disciples, they were trained in that area. Therefore, Galilee was the birthing place of Christianity. Today, in the first reading, we read the Jonah, the one of the dumbest prophets in the history in Old Testament. From Yopa to Nineveh was 500 miles walking, but he decided to run away to Tarshish, which is the Spain from Joppa, another 2,500 miles away. Instead of choosing 500 miles, he wanted to choose 2,500 miles. How dummy he must have been. But God trained him in the valley of Whale deep down in the water. That is the Galilee. They were all frightened at the presence of the challenges from Jews and Romans, Romans. And they did not know where to go. What they did was, I want to go back home and do the things I am used to. So they came back to the fisherman's place. From there, Jesus found them and wanted to restore them. With the touch of his healing power, with the impression he was deeply inscribed in their souls, what kind of person he must have been? The one, this one man from a small village, the territory that was unknown, the territory that was relatively undervalued. But this man's impact was enormous. And due to this man, the 12 followers of Jesus they wanted to dedicate their life entirely. And 11 were martyred and one left long enough. With this one humble person from Galilee, I am standing here and the people in East Meadow are sitting here and worshiping God together. What is Galilee? Galilee is the school for the Christian faith. Galilee is the home from where the disciples shared the precious memories with their own master. To me, the Jesuit novitiate time 
I spent with my Jesuit novices, the intensive time I spent in meditating upon the Bibles and living life together in the hope that someday I will be there to proclaim the gospel. The time we all dearly cherish, the time we all grew up around our mother and our mother's kitchen and our father's yard. Whenever we feel tired and exhausted, we want to go back to the memories. And Galilee was just like that to the disciples. Past year and this year, and probably the following years further, we have been tired and we are tired and we will be uh, required more patience. When we feel we are lost, we want to go back to mom's home cook, mom's smell, and father's voice and grandfather's generous embrace. That's why we are here. Every time I say funeral mass, I see the coffin, the body, but once with strong foot and walking around this church property and serving the people and greeting the people. In the way the second reading Corinthians described, the time was running and therefore they are laid here. But with all those memories, we said goodbye to our loved ones. The people in East Meadow, we have our spiritual home here. This is our gallery, the place where we worship God, the place we listen to the words of God and teachings of God. The disciples of Jesus, they were trained in Galilee. The reason why they were able to go through the ordeals and crucifixions after Jesus were because they had such an intense and loving memories, especially around Galilee area. That's where they were longing for throughout their lonely mission itinerant trip. We have our Galilee. What is our Galilee? To us, our Galilee is right there as you open your Bible. When you open your Bible, Jesus is rising and living with you and feeding you with the Eucharist, his body and blood, and walking towards you when you are in a stormy water. Open the Bible when you feel you are lost. That's where the Galilee starts. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was married, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended in heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the same trust that first apostles had to follow Jesus, let us turn to God and bring him our knees. For the church throughout the world, may we, through God's grace, continue to grow in the likeness of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation's leaders, may the Holy Spirit inspire them in promoting justice for all, especially the marginalized. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those serving in the military and all first responders and their families, for comfort, hope for those torn by violence, and for a just and lasting peace for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater respect for the value of human life, from the moment of conception to the moment of natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in the recognition of vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, religious life, and dedicated lay people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who experience illness of body, mind, or spirit from this virus and from every other illness, including those who have asked for our prayers, Marie Salimi, Corella Galvez, James Cornell, Margarita Figueroa, Carmine Ped- Pedrosini, Anthony Lo Bianco, Irene and Catherine and Catherine and Catherine Feldman, Freddie Pollock, and for those mentioned in our bulletin, may they and their caregivers feel God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, Helen and James McGovern, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died this week from this virus and from every other illness, including Eileen Fallis and Cal- Cal- Calandra, Michael F. DeSeco, Jermaine Vega, Patrick M. Torino, Maria Hernandez, and for all our loved ones who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our intentions, those given to the ministry of praise, and those that remain in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercy and love, we turn to you with trust in your infinite goodness. We ask that you hear the prayers we bring you in the name of Jesus, your Son. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you all you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with the angels and saints, we praise you with, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave to disciples and saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave to disciples and saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and John Barry our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be c o e r s to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Follow me if I but call your name. Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown? behind 
If I but call your name Will you care for cruel and kind And never be the same Will you risk the hostile stare Should your life attract or scare Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me. Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord.
Please be seated. It's only going to take a moment, but I'm starting to see some of these masks. We are actually creeping up next to our what our limits will be. So we're going to need to. I'm going to need to figure some even more logistics in the future. At this mass, at this week, we have our people in the, usually in the seventh grade, but those who are two years away from confirmation. And we've asked them to bring in their forms to show that they are committed to the program. Can you hold it up if I, just so I can see how many we have here? Okay, yeah, no need to be afraid. We have to do this a little differently this year. Usually I come and you give them to me and I take them and I hand them off to Miss Ellen. This year we have to, I'm gonna, we're going to put the basket down and you're going to bring them here. So I'm going to ask everybody with a form, please come forward. And stay here for a minute. Just spread out when you stay here. You've been listening to me for seven years tell you we're together and now I'm telling you spread out, but stay up. <laughs> and turn around. <laughs> See, these people for the next two years, they're really going to be focusing on the sacrament of confirmation. You know, we heard about it with Jonah. We heard about it with Peter and Andrew, James and John, that for, for 2,000 years since Jesus spoke, we've been handing this on to each other and to each other and to each other. And you guys, you're the next step. You are the next step. And that's why when you get confirmed, we pray, God, give me the, the, the gifts that you're going to give me to allow me to do what my parents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents all the way back have already done. You're going to be saying, God, give me the courage to be able to do this in front of others. God, give me the strength to persevere in this faith. God, help me to be the part of your plan that you thought about before I was even born. So how about if we just turn around? Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Congratulations. <laughs> Two more years. <laughs> Thank you, Father Holtz. He is a great leader, our spiritual leader uh, to our community, the community where we have been going through difficult times. But due to his presence in the center of our life, we've been able to be continuously work, worshiping God. And I think he de deserves our big hands too. <laughs> And thank you, Deacon Dennis. It's always good to have you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, our Grand Master John, <laughs> and our campers and Maureen and all those people. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Thank you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.